Well, good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us here, the intersection of faith and culture. This is the Meeting House on Faith Radio. Great to welcome back to the program, Kara Whitney. And the last time Kara and I had the opportunity to chat, she was talking about a book called Unbridled Faith for Young Readers, which, as I recall, was really a, an extension of the original Unbridled Faith book, if I can say it like that. And yep. uh, there's a, a new book out. It's called Feel of Grace releasing this week, and Kara Whitney joining us from Nebraska, and you are, you actually grew up on a farm, on a cattle farm in northern Wisconsin, spent some time in Vegas, actually you've done radio, and in a sense you're still doing radio because you are one of the teachers with Back to the Bible, just launched a new podcast earlier this week. And your husband is, as we might say, a media and entertainment superstar. His name is Dan. Yes. But people probably would know him not as Dan Whitney, but Larry the Cable Guy. Yes. Carol Whitney joining us today here on the program. Nobody ever calls you Mrs. Larry the Cable Guy, do they? That probably you know, would be insulting, uh... wouldn't it? Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, I've answered to worse, Bob, Let's just, and I've earned it, unfortunately. So, so, so. How, how does Dan become Larry? Uh, how did that happen? You know what? Larry, from what I understand, was uh, basically a cable guy that would come to your house. Yeah. And uh, he just, it, it was a character that he just built off of, you know. Uh, he started in his stand-up career going, hey, have you ever met this guy? And then he'd go into this cable guy character. Well, people liked it so much that it just stuck. And then someone suggested, why don't you just go up and do that character? <laughs> and of course, you know, everybody gives uh, their, their two cents. So some people were like, this will never work. When are you going to give that up? But uh, obviously people liked it and it stuck. So... And he, at the time you met, as I recall from our previous conversation, he was already do. he was already known as Larry the Cable Guy, as I recall. Yeah, you know, he had just started, um, it wasn't out yet, but he had just started recording uh, for the part in Cars as Mater. Um, he was, <laughs> you know, he was doing comedy clubs and he was very successful at it. He'd yeah. do his call-ins uh, to radio stations. It wasn't until after we met that it just went bonkers, you know? And it's so funny because when you see that, all of a sudden this person in the spotlight just burst forth. People just assume like they're this overnight sensation, but his career has spanned 30 years and it took, you know, some time to get there. A lot of hard work. So okay. how is it that the two of you, and of course now you have two sons, you live on a farm in Nebraska. How did you, you grew up on a farm. How did you, in this particular season of life, how is it that the Whitney family ended up on the farm? Well, we have one boy and one girl. One so, boy, and, I, I apologize. Okay. No, nope, that's fine. That's out, it's out there. Nobody, you know, if you go to like uh, Wikipedia, sometimes it's two boys, sometimes it's. Really? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you oh can't trust the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah watch <laughs> out. Check your sources. We say that. Check your sources. Yeah. I want to be so, a good source. So, okay, one yep. one boy and one girl. One boy, one girl. Uh, so I grew up on a farm. Absolutely loved it. I spent all my summers as a kid bottle feeding beef calves. Um, I've always been obsessed with horses, and I just love acreages, space, um, cornfields, the whole thing. Now, I did love radio. I still do. And so I went into radio and, but I always wanted to get back to that in some form, knowing that I could not make a living doing it. Uh, it would, I, my aspirations were always to, when I retired, have this hobby farm where I just had some critters. So my radio check would come in every couple of weeks and I'd put 10% of it away and invest that as this is my goal. Well, then I met Dan, we got married. We spent probably about five years living in a tour bus because, you know, like we were saying that career, it just exploded. And so you want to take advantage of when you're hot because you never know when that career is going to cool down. You just don't. 
you don't know when something like COVID is going to hit um, that basically sidelines your your momentum. So we uh, we got married, we had kids, and we raised them in a tour bus like the Partridge family, and <laughs> we did that for about five years. Um, once our kids reached a certain age. Uh, Dan made the decision and I thought it was an awesome decision. He's such a good dad and a good husband that he said, I'm going to slow down now. And so then I can be home for my kids. Um, our kids are 13 and 14. They're just such a crucial age. Um, and so that allowed me to then have the hobby farm of my dreams, right? Um, and, and so that's where that came to be. I love it. I we'll go out there and shovel manure. And it's like the best day of my life. When I do that, I really connect, um, mostly because I, I'm left alone. Nobody wants to shovel manure, or be asked to shovel manure. So nobody's bothering me. And so I have really connected with God um, in, those, in that, those moments. Carol Whitney joining us today here on The Meeting House on Faith Radio, the author of this new book just out this week. It is called Fields of Grace. And so, Carol, what is it or, or why is it that you really sense that God was leading you? You, Of course, Unbridled Faith was a very successful book. You had the book that you and I discussed that came after it, Unbridled Faith for Young Readers. This new book is called Fields of Grace. So... How is it that you really sense God was leading you to, to do this book? Well, I don't think he led me as much as he just put things in my path where I just couldn't tell him no. Uh, <laughs> I tried telling him no. And, um, it, it's, it's funny. I don't want to be disobedient. Um, so people would come to me. They'd say, hey, can you write this? Do you think you can do that? Or, and then all of a sudden I had this book offer. The only thing that slows me down is myself because I deal with a lot of self-doubt. I don't feel like I'm equipped to do these things. Bob, I have like a 12th grade education and I barely got that. Like, but God equips us for the things he wants us to do. We just have to say yes. So I said yes and just step forward in faith. And here's unbridled faith that deals with um, the questions I had about God, about his character, why certain things happen in our lives that we can't figure out. That was unbridled faith. I think everybody has those questions. So those answered that the new book is different. It, uh, the chapters are longer, um, but this has to do with sharing your faith in that you know, people who are unbelievers, we can't expect them to act like us. Hmm. Christians get so discouraged and, and it, it's almost like they're looked at like they're the enemy. They're not. They just don't know. They're, they're just not believers yet. Uh, anyone is a potential believer. And so I don't want people to be intimidated with sharing their faith. So Fields of Grace is basically... Uh, me correlating farm stories, my own personal experiences with sharing my faith with people. And I don't always get it right, but it also shows that there's redemption in that chapter for the parts where I've made mistakes that God still uh, comes in and he makes something really beautiful with what's going on in that chapter. So it's about sharing your faith and that we don't look at unbelievers like projects, but people that just, and we don't have saving power. You know, I think we put a lot of stress on ourselves. Yeah. Like we can have that one nugget that's going to turn someone on to Jesus, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to glorify God and make an introduction and let Jesus do the work. Well, I want to talk with you just a bit more about how we can really be more uh, effective, if you will, in sharing our faith. Of course, we are called to be faithful, leave the results up to God, and, and we'll talk about that. But I, I did want to, for, you, for you to kind of connect the dots, in a sense, between telling farm stories and sharing about life on the farm and how you actually relate that to a, a Christian life that is is winning and productive and, and growing, if you will. 
Well, gosh, uh, I mean, you put me on the spot. I do correlate farm <laughs> stories. I talk about, you know, bottle feeding my calves and the things I've learned by um, trail riding on my horse. Um, and then how I can bring that into situations. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a tip uh, uh, to evangelize. That's something that you wouldn't think I could correlate into a farm story, but just trust me that I did. Like I said, okay. you put me on the spot. But, <laughs> You know, with all this social media, and you get it, like you, you see these people um, who are either trying to witness, but they're doing it so unkindly on social media, or somebody is coming in and maybe seeing something that might be false about what it means to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, um, to instead of getting on social media and defending your faith by making this public statement uh, about how this person is wrong or trying to win an argument, I suggest personally, privately messaging that person and just saying, hey, you know what? Uh, I see that you have, you've said this or you have questions about that. You know what? This is how I came to faith. This is how I rectified that. Um, and you know, bring forth the character of God through this personal message and have this personal interaction with somebody that is not embarrassing to them or um, calling them out. You're not trying to win an argument, like I said. So that just having a personal connection with a person. And I'm not saying there won't be some rejection there. There might be. Guess what? Move on. Uh, but you'll have less of a chance. It, to me, it just says, you know what? I care enough to personally message you and say, look, I know that you believe this, but here's a resource that says otherwise. Uh, and I've even gone as far as saying, uh, I tell you what, what's your address? If you don't mind giving it to me, let me send you a case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Or let me send you this book from Jay Warner Wallace. Um, it's so funny. I, I will send my own book, but very rarely. It's usually some form of material that I've used myself that helped bring me to into a personal relationship with Jesus. Carol Whitney is joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. She is an author, a Bible teacher, is featured on the Back to the Bible or as part of the Back to the Bible team, has a new podcast that just released and also a new book called Fields of Grace. Joining me here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. So Kara, if someone is experiencing, and that, that was a great story, thank you. And I apologize for putting you on the spot. You did a great job there as far as just talking about looking for opportunities, looking for ways. And people might be, in a sense, intimidated to, to share their faith, to talk to someone about Jesus. What would you say to the person that maybe is is struggling or maybe feels a, a bit reticent to to share his or her faith with someone else. Right, it's relational. So, mm -hmm. you know, you sometimes I suppose it works. What do you think happens to you uh when you die? To me that is a hard introduction to Jesus. Um you know, some people are just, look at where your spiritual gift is. Some people are so good at like, this person might be lonely. I'm going to bake them a cake and take it over to their house. Or, hey, I'm baked you some cookies. I'm going to leave them on your step. Um, you know, I'm going to invite you to coffee. You know, you don't have to like pounce on them right away. All you're doing is starting this relationship with them that at some point you're going to make that introduction uh, to Jesus, right? So my hairdresser, I will go to my hairdresser and then at some point in the conversation, I can weave in there that I follow Jesus and why I follow him, you know, because everybody has questions, you know, like this isn't anything I've taken willy nilly. I just didn't say, oh, I want to make sure that I go to heaven when I die. That's not how I came to faith. I came to faith by, let me, let me almost disprove this so I can move on from it. And so I studied the resurrection and saw that there was so much evidence for that, that I made the decision to follow Jesus. So I'll talk about that. I'll talk about my own testimony, why I believe it, and how I grow daily in my faith. 
and then I live it. Uh, but you'll see in the book, I don't always get it right, but how God puts redemption in that, like how that can also become a witnessing tool. Let's go back to your own personal walk and how living on a farm, you are, you have horses there on the farm. Your family lives there. You do, you know, obviously you work, you work and, and work alone to spend that time as you were sharing earlier with God. Tell me about the impact on your life that just spending that time with God and spending time with God's creation how has that impacted you? That's one of my favorite gifts that he's given us, that glimpse of what it's going to be like on the new earth, this mm -hmm. beautiful creation that he's given us. I love um, the sounds of the birds. I love the, the peace of a horse grazing. I, I love the sound of that. I love the smells of the barn even, you know, just... To, to me, that, that's one of the hopes I have is that I get this all the time. Like I, in the new earth, there's nothing that disrupts that. Um, you know, I talk about in my book about how when I was a kid, I would go out in the middle of this cow pasture and it was one of my favorite things in that I realized that I can't get that back. You know, the innocence of being a kid, um, all of those things. But on the other side, I get to redeem that. Like, you know, I, I love that connection. But also when I was writing Unbridled Faith, you know, the questions that I had about why God doesn't give us the things that we want. Um, and that chapter was about my Shetland pony, Tucker, who at the time, um, it's embarrassing to admit, but I was given the dude um, Rice Krispie treats because that's what made him happy. Um, but in the end, it turned out it made him sick because he was getting too much sugar. Uh, anyone who has horses knows that too much sugar can create some pretty severe health problems. Well, I made him sick. And so I was like, well, I guess that's why God doesn't give us everything we want. And so I was able to write a chapter about that. I think, you know, Unbridled Faith for Young Readers, that's a good way to teach kids. Like God is wants good things for you. And that's not always getting what you want because he knows what's around the bend. He knows what's good for you. So that would be one of many examples, I guess. Well, the name of the book is Fields of Grace, Sharing Faith from the Horse Farm. And when you, when you look at the content, the messages that God has given you, just the, the stories that have been inspired in your life, what would you say, how would you boil it down? What would you say would be the central thing you would want people to experience or take away? That there's a purpose for your life, that your purpose, you're not a mistake. You're not here by accident. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is to know God, to get into this deep, meaningful relationship with him, uh, recognize what he did for you on the cross, that what Jesus Christ did opens that relationship up. Um, that he died for you. That's how much he loves you. And then, so to know him and then to use that relationship to make him known, that is the biggest piece. It is so heartbreaking right now, especially when you see people who claim to, um, who, who are, are leading these whole, whole congregations and they're telling them that there are all these other ways to get to God, that there's all these other ways to get to heaven. Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father but through me. That is like having your house on fire, okay? And the one person that knows where the exit is, is not telling you. That is the most unloving thing you can do. If you love people the way Jesus tells us to love, and it is not always easy, but it's to tell them how to find that exit. Carol Whitney joining us today here on the Meeting House on Faith Radio. This is release week for the book, Fields of Grace. It's also release week for a brand new podcast in association with Back to the Bible. You've been part of the teaching team there. So tell me about the concept of this new show. It's called Go Closer. Uh, I'm actually working on a new book right now, and 
it's totally coincidental, but I'm taking people's testimonies um, and I'm talking about how it's grown them closer to God uh, in the book that I'm working on now. But this is what this podcast does. And it just happened by complete happy accident. I am interviewing people <laughs> yeah. and they're giving us their testimonies. And I think the biggest question is what grows you closer to God? What keeps you from moving closer to God? And it's so amazing because everybody connects um, in different ways. Uh, you know, some people, they're like, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to do this way or that because this is what so-and-so does. But that doesn't always work for everyone. The way Dan connects uh, and grows closer to God is different in how I connect and grow closer to God. And so just it, finding your groove. And so this podcast basically helps people grow closer. You know, if being in the word daily is so essential and you don't have to spend that much time, 15 minutes in the word, 15 minutes to talk to somebody about Jesus and share, you know, is going to move you closer to God more today than yesterday. Um, it's so crazy. There are people that go to church one hour a week and they believe that's making a significant difference. It might change your, your life for a few hours, but if I spent, Bob, if you spend an hour a week with your wife, how do you think that's going to go over? Right. right. So, yep. So yep. go closer is basically to help people move closer to God more today than yesterday. And it goes along with what back to the Bible is doing. Uh, which is this app called Go Tandem, which will get you in the word in tiny spurts throughout your day, in the times where you feel like you need that spiritual recharge, or when you have five minutes here or there. And that's through gotandem.online, as I understand it, where people can find out more information. About yeah, I think it's gotandem.org. Oh, they're going to kill me if I don't get this right. But I'm just saying, <laughs> go tandem back to the Bible. You'll find you could, it. Yeah, you could search back to the Bible and, and find it. Now, how can people connect with you and find out more information about the new book, Fields of Grace? Well, Fields of Grace is out, so they can get it on Amazon, anywhere books are sold. Um, same with Unbridled Faith. Um, and two, I don't take any money. So, you know, I get my portion for writing it, but I've never seen it. Uh, it goes right to charity. My, <laughs> my, uh, publisher, well, it'd be my agent, I guess. He's like, Hey, where do you want this to go? And it's, it goes into this foundation or, or it goes to that. Um, and it's usually horse riding or back to the Bible or, um, something, you know, something like an incubator for the NICU or something, but, but I never see a dime of it. Um, as far as I'm concerned with connecting with me personally, I don't have a web page. I don't have any of that. This isn't about me. Um, it's not promoting Kara Whitney. This is glorifying God. It's to know him, make him known. And they can find you. They can they can Google Fields of Grace, go to their favorite bookseller and and find find the book and it is now available carol whitney joining us today here in the meeting house on faith radio great to connect with you again thank you so much for the conversation hey you got it thank you